everybody, welcome back to another Sup Border video. In this video, we're going to be reviewing the Aqua Marina Blade inflatable wind sup board. Now, if you're one of these people that maybe used to windsurf or would like to get into windsurfing, but also really enjoy paddleboarding, this is a video and a board that potentially you should be checking out. This is an inflatable board, so many of you are gonna be looking at this to maybe get yourself or the whole family into supping and windsurfing. The full specifications for this board, it's 10 foot six long, it's 33 inches wide, it's six inches thick, 350 liters in volume, and it's got a recommended PSI pressure of 18 PSI. So if you've watched some of our SUP board reviews in the past, you'll notice that we do a lot of stand-up paddle boards, sole stand-up paddle boards, but we also like to get into boards that do a lot of other multi-sport things. Now we do this personally for our own benefit and for your benefit, because we really want to encourage you to do other sports alongside of paddleboarding at the same time. Paddleboarding is a great sport and it's ideal when there's no wind and the water's nice and flat and you're paddling on glass, but when the wind picks up, sometimes paddleboarding isn't actually that much fun. But if you can then take your existing paddleboard, put a windsurf rig on it, or even go winging, then you can transform your existing stuff to a wind sport craft. And it truly is great for a few things. It's great for the whole family, because it means you can get into a lot of different water sports together without having to spend lots more money. It's great for yourself because you're gonna guarantee more water time. And it is also a real benefit doing lots of different water sports because then you will improve your overall balance and confidence on your main water sport if it is supping. So a bit of background about us and our family. So me and Lucy have actually been windsurfing for quite a few years in the past. We were fairly proficient windsurfers, but we haven't really been windsurfing for a few years. This was a great opportunity for us to get out in lighter winds, put a windsurf sail back on a paddleboard and just enjoying windsurfing in its basic form. Now we have actually been using this board for probably over two months with this windsurf rig. We've had it pumped up the whole time and as soon as the wind is 10 to 15 knots, we just go out, put the sail on it and just have a little poodle around. We've had our young daughter on the front. We've just been playing around over the summer and it is a lot of fun. So a bit more of information about this board and why this one works so well as a windsup. The outline shape of this board and size of this board is very common to other all round paddle boards in the market. So 10 foot six long, 33 inches wide. It's a little bit wider than most of your all round boards. Most of your all round boards are 32 inches wide. The good thing about that is it's easier to stand on the board. It's easier definitely when you're getting into windsurfing, pulling the sail up, moving yourself around. Remember, if you're gonna be learning, you're gonna to wanna to have a lot of balance and actually having the extra width there gives you a little bit more balance. When you're paddling on flat water, yes, it is gonna make that a little bit slower than a board that's 32 inches wide, but it's not really designed for speed. It's designed for just getting out, paddling around, having fun off the beach. It's an all round paddle board. You still get your bungees at the front. You still got a nice big carry handle up at the front there and at the back, which is great for carrying the board in and out of the water as using it with a sup or a windsurf board. You've got your central carry handle. You've got your large EVA diamond grip, even with a sort of crop up crocodile skin pattern on here, which is really grippy. On the top of the board, in that EVA deck pad at the front there, the most important thing is you have a universal joint thread. It's a six mil thread that you can screw your universal joint in here, and that's where you attach your windsurf rig to. At the back of the board underneath, you've got your central slide-in click fin system that all the Aquamarina boards have. And in the middle of the board, sort of directly under the handle, you have a larger fin which you can install when you are windsurfing. It acts like a dagger board or a center board fin, and that stops you from going downwind or helps you stay upwind. This board is a similar construction to the other Aquamarina boards in the range. They say it's a double layer construction and it's got an extra rail band for extra reinforcing. As far as the construction is concerned of this board, as I said, we've had this board, this exact board pumped up for over two months and it's still at this 18 PSI recommended PSI. So from our point of view, we're really happy with the construction and it's been no problem at all, which is a good thing because these are cheaper price point boards. At Camarina are a cheaper price point brand, but they do actually have some really good boards in their range. And it's nice to see that we've been using this one for over two months and we've seen no problems with it. 
Now, of course, we put this board through our deflection test. Our deflection test is where we measure how much the board bends. So we put it on a gap of 1.5 meters apart, and then we put 75 kilograms of weight on the center of the board, and then we measure how much the board bends or deflects. This board at 18 PSI dropped 13 millimeters. Now, to give you an idea of a scale of what's a really, really stiff board and what's a bendy board, the stiffest board we've ever tested dropped seven millimeters, but the newer, not so good boards are dropping about 19 millimeters. So this board is actually onto the stiffer end of the boards when it comes to our deflection test. So 13 millimeters, that's a fairly healthy deflection which is good because you are gonna be using this as a heavier based rider, definitely up to about 120 kilos, but if you're 100 kilos, 100, 110 kilos, and you're taking 20 kilos of maybe a dog or a child on the front, it would take that physical weight. Definitely sweet spot, 115 kilos of a rider to 85 kilos of a rider, no problem at all. Now with the package price of £689, $880 or €699, Euros, thereabout, you can probably find them cheaper on the internet if you shop around, you only get a pump, the board, the leash, bag and fins. You do not get a paddle or the windsurf rig. The windsurf rigs, you can put any windsurf rig on this. At Camarina just sent us this one so we could use this one for the test. This is the three meter one and you can get this complete, ready to go, take your windsurfing for 589 pounds. They also do a five meter one, which you can get complete for 859 pounds. They are definitely cheap price point rigs. You're not gonna get loads of performance out of these, but they do seem to match the board fairly well for getting you on the water. Which brings me on to the performance of this and using it as a windsurfer. If you are a more performance windsurfer, well, you're probably not even gonna be watching this review, but it's, it's at the basic entry level into windsurfing. It's cruising back and forth in your shorts if you've come from the windsurfing days in the past, enjoying the sunshine, putting the kids on the front. It's gonna do everything you need it to do with this board. You're not gonna be doing any high performance maneuvers, but the board and the sail isn't set up for it. If you're gonna be getting into the sport using this sort of setup, it's absolutely fine. A word and a tip though, definitely always go for a slightly smaller sail. If you're maybe 75 kg and down, get yourself the three meter rig. It's gonna be much easier to pull up and get yourself windsurfing. If you're a bit more experienced or you're heavier, maybe 85 kg and up, you could get yourself the five meter sail. But remember, this is aimed at sort of family fun, getting into the sport, having a lot of fun on the water, nice sunny days, getting out in the summer, getting back into windsurfing, or getting and learning the basics for the first time. It's not designed for that high level performance, so don't pretend it will be. But because it's got that large central fin under the handle here, and it's a good width, it's actually really easy to use. Why do you need a central fin to get into a windsurfing when you start off with? Because it's gonna keep you upwind. It's gonna make you stay upwind a lot more than having no fin. So you can windsurf without a central fin or a dagger board, but you'll find you're gonna drift downwind a lot quicker because you don't have the sailing knowledge definitely when you start to keep yourself upwind. So by having a good central fin, it does keep the board upwind. We've actually started to get our daughter into windsurfing who's now eight. Unfortunately, this sail is too big for her, but with this board and a smaller sail, like a 1.5 meter, she can get on it absolutely fine. And because it's got the large central fin, she can actually stay upwind, which is basically the number one thing you need to be trying to do when you start to windsurf. So as you probably gather, we really do like this Aquamarina Blade inflatable windsurf. But there are a few cons or things you need to be aware of before you go and buy this product. The packaging that this comes in is pretty bad. There's a lot of plastic wrapped around this board. Yes, this is a plastic board in effect, but if it can be wrapped in paper, that is much easier to recycle or even put in the compost tip and just let it biodegrade. There's still a lot of plastic packaging with the Aquamarina stuff and that really has to change. A lot of us are really making our buying decision just around how the board is packaged. If we're looking at things you should be aware of when you're using it and performance, the universal joint, which is a screw thread here, is actually a little bit too far forward for the optimum position on this board. If you get going in more windier conditions, you're loading the sail up, which you could be doing with this, you will find that it's quite far to the nose of the board and if you're using it in choppier conditions, 
the nose is quite close to the water. So potentially when it gets windier in those gusts, the board could start to nosedive. It hasn't nosedive and it didn't nosedive, but if the UJ was a little bit further back, it would stop that from happening. Another thing about having this universal joint placed here, opposed to even just four inches further back, is that when you're putting small kits on it with small sails, they will find it a little bit harder to tack because they're having to lean the sail back. If you're unaware of this and you haven't learned windsurfing yet, you'll understand what I mean when you give it a go, but you lean your sail back and that forces you into a tack. When you have a really small sail, you have to lean the sail further back towards the back of the board and obviously the UJ is further forward. The kids can do it if you get themselves a smaller fin but they can find going into jibes much, much easier and much quicker. So a lot of the younger kids, unfortunately, are gonna have to, to a jibe with this opposed to a tack, which if you know, if you come from windsurfing, generally puts you downwind a little bit quicker than going into a tack. If I'm confusing you, you're unaware of it, it's just basically another thing, the UJ could be further back. It's a small thing, and it's only really to be aware, kids on sub two meter sails, maybe aged, eight to 10. If you're bigger than that and you're on a three meter rig, it's not really a problem. And the other carnal thing to be aware of, observation really, is this is Acra Marina's V1 pump. It's a two-way pump, so it pumps on the upstroke and the downstroke. It's an adequate pump and it will get your 18 PSI into the board. But Acra Marina do a V2 pump, which is just a little bit more efficient. It's a lot nicer to use. And it will be nice to have that V2 pump with this package because you, are, you can have the ability to put 18 PSI in this board and it's a fairly big board. So that's another observation there. Doesn't come with the better pump, comes with a V1 pump. But in summary, apart from a few cons there, the Acre Marina blade does actually work really well as an all round sup. The center fin really helps the board stay upwind. It's a great looking board. We're really happy with the construction and finish. Definitely doing multi-sports like this is a great thing because you are gonna really increase your water time. When it's flat and no wind, you can go paddle boarding. When it's windier, you can get into windsurfing, you can learn to windsurf, or you can dust off that old windsurf rig and put it on here and go windsurfing. We've really enjoyed this using this board over the last few months. If you've used this board or if you've got any other wind sups and inflatable wind sups, please let us know your comments and feedback, what you found best, what you found bad about them. As always, if you haven't visited us on the main Supboarder website, go on Supboarder, you'll find there's lots of content on there. Everything about this, loads of sup stuff. And also if you're new to paddleboarding and you're unsure about how to be safe on the water, definitely check out our new series, Sup Safe, which has given you all the information you need to become a really safe paddler on the water this summer. Hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Ruben and we'll see you on another video real soon.